Hello, and welcome to Guidance for Better Life. Today's video is about blocks to spiritual growth. This show is for anybody out there seeking spiritual growth, and I'm going to define some of the things that would indicate spiritual growth in a moment. But if you're not into spiritual growth, you just want a more balanced life with less fear, worry, and anger, some of those things, a little bit more abundance, uh, I think today's show can, uh, can help you also. Before I get into blocks of spiritual growth, I want to make an announcement, something new at Guidance for Better Life. I have uh, people contact me around the world wanting some interaction after reading my book, The Spiritual Keys. The problem is, if they're in Germany or Colorado or other places around the world, and especially with the virus going on now, it's tough to get up to our retreat center. And some people, even without the virus, they just have a tough time getting up here. It's too far, too expensive, Just they just can't do it for whatever reason. So what I'm offering, and the first offering will be October 3rd, and there'll be two more this year, three total, and we're going to call it, I think we're going to call it, Zoom with Profit. And I think you already know what we're talking about. Uh, the technology is Zooming where we can meet, and I can talk to you face-to-face, -face, get to know you a little bit. I can answer your questions. I've got 14 books out now. I've written and published, and I have over 100 videos on YouTube in the last couple of years. There's a lot of really good information, but this good information also generates good questions. Or maybe some of you want more clarity. Or maybe more specific or more detailed information on certain topics that in a short video we don't cover. So starting October 3rd, we're going to call it, I believe we're going to call it, we're just getting going, Zoom with Profit. You can sign up. There's a link below. And we'll do a two-hour program, the dates and time and everything. Of course, we'll take a break. Zoom with Profit, um, where I can answer your questions. Uh, the first one's going to be just answering your questions. And when you fill out the app, you can put down some questions, or later you can send us questions if you don't have them initially. I'm look, really looking forward to this. It's one thing to have people make comments uh, on our book reviews, and I appreciate those. Thank you. Or comments on our videos, but I'd like to start seeing your face and hearing your voice. And what I plan to do on the very first one is just answer questions. And that two hours goes pretty quick. If we finish answering questions, then I'll take questions live. I'm really looking forward to this. After I know where the main interest is in the questions, it might be different than I, than I think, then I'll figure out a topic for the second and third one. There'll be one in November and one in December. So if you're interested in meeting with Profit on Zoom with hopefully a whole bunch of people and all learning and growing together, um, check out the link below. So thank you. And I'm, I'm looking forward to this. So today's video is Blocks to Spiritual Growth. And like I said, like on the sidebar, Blocks to Abundance. But I'm focusing on spiritual growth. So let me talk about some signs of spiritual growth. One, for example, just this, just the tip of the iceberg here. If you feel unworthy of love, which is so prevalent in the world, almost every student I've ever had in 30 years, deep down, no matter how they try to cover it up, they think maybe God loves everybody else, but not them. That is, that's something we want to work on. So if you start feeling that you're worthy of love from God, from his prophet, through his Holy Spirit, through a friend, a neighbor, a spouse, a child, whoever, a parent, that's definitely spiritual growth. Another big part of spiritual growth and why we incarnate is to learn how to give love and how to receive. Over the years, most of my students, many, many students over 30 years, I've noticed a trend and it's actually almost surprising. Maybe the opposite of what you think. Virtually all my students, with very few exceptions, are pretty good at giving of themselves, doing nice things for other people. But maybe because they feel unworthy when they first come up to the retreat center, they struggle with receiving love. I've even had people that when they're given a simple compliment, they, they almost can't handle a compliment. And if you're somebody that you just cringe when somebody compliments you, um, it's a clue you may have a problem with accepting love. If you can grow in those areas, giving and receiving love, besides a more abundant life, 
which is obvious. That's definitely spiritual growth. Uh, if you learn to recognize God's love in all of my 14 books, in way, some way, shape, or form, help you recognize the love of God. It's everywhere. Sometimes it's dramatic. Sometimes it's so su subtle and disguised, it takes a real keen eye to recognize it. We're given, all given guidance every day, but do you recognize it? If you don't recognize it, it's hard to, uh, hard to utilize. Uh, so spiritual growth, if you can recognize more of God's love and guidance, and if you become more receptive, for example, and these are the keys, all these things recognizing the keys are, are keys in here, and also how to receptive. You might recognize God's love, but have a block to being receptive. So you recognize it, but you can't receive it. That's almost, in some ways, it's worse than even recognize it. It's like setting you up and just making you feel bad. Um, having a more peaceful heart and mind, that's actually one of my spiritual keys. How do you do that? Imagine walking through life always stressed and strained versus walking through life more peaceful in your mind and heart, more in balance. Nothing really throws you that core piece too far out of balance. As you grow in that area, that would be a sign of spiritual growth. And again, the keys can help with that. But there are things that block that, and that's what I'll get to in a moment. If you're not interested in God or relationship with the Heavenly Father, wouldn't it still be nice to walk in peace and be a little more calm in life? Um, and why is that important? God and the Holy Spirit and prophet, more often than not, the, the, the whispers in the heart, the nudges, the guidance is God generally speaks to our heart. That's our higher self, soul, but basically heart. Not as much to our intellect. Yes, some to the intellect. But if we only think about God and our relationship all intellectually, well, that right there is a block I haven't planned on covering. We need to open our hearts. And when our heart's more open, and if we're peaceful, it's more open. If we're relaxed, it's more open. If we're not angry or guilty and full of fear and worry, our heart tends to be more open. And then we recognize the blessings of God, the hand of God in our life, maybe more receptive to the love, maybe able to accept the love more. Um, if you want a better relationship with God and you feel more trust for God, you're more confident there's a God, the Heavenly Father truly loves all of us down here, that we have not been abandoned, that would be a sign of spiritual growth. If you tend to be a more grateful person, that's a huge, huge step in spiritual growth and also more abundance. Ungrateful people are generally not all that happy. So if you're more grateful, you see some things in your life you're grateful for and, and you appreciate them, whether you whether you're grateful for God or not, you're generally more happy, more balanced, and that's be a more, more abundant life, I would think. So, so those are some of the things, and that's a small list of some of the things I would consider spiritual growth. So now, what keeps you from having growth in those particular areas? The big one is a closed heart. If you lack peace, that's a closed heart. When you're more peaceful, your heart is really more open. Many of the keys in my Spiritual Keys book, Spiritual Keys for Abundant Life, show you how to open your heart more, like gratitude, the Hugh love song to God that's in all our stories just about. It's the most beautiful prayer to God. You, and God hears that, and you send love and gratitude. That opens your heart, and it also raises you to a higher view and a wider view of life. What are some of the blocks to opening your heart? And this is real simple, but once, you, once, once I explain it, you go, wow, could I have a V8? And I'll call them the negative passions of the mind, negative passions. And I think pretty much everybody, when I mention these and explain some that aren't so clear, I think you realize it's certainly not a good way to live. It takes away a lot of joy of life. So even if you're not seeking God and God's prophet and the Holy Spirit, if you get rid of some of these blocks, you also have a more abundant, happier life. But if you're seeking God in a relationship with the Heavenly Father, it's really important to at least reduce these blocks. I don't know if we ever get rid of them, but if we can reduce them, it's a huge, huge plus. And what I'm going to have uh, put up on the screen now is a heart, 
this little this little uh, illustration. And one side, and since a lot of spiritual growth involves receiving and giving love from people and from God and the Holy Spirit and prophet, on one side I'm going to put up love, and the other side you see blocks to love. I could have put up spiritual growth on one side where the love is, and on the other side we could put up blocks to spiritual growth. But I like I use this in a lot of my uh, seminars. I'd like to put up love on one side. The more love, the better. I hope you all can at least consider that being true. So, and then we'll put a line down the middle, and then we'll have blocks to love. These passions of the mind, things like anger. When you're really angry, how's it? Do you feel more love? Does that line go where you have more love on the heart side, or does that line? The blocks to love is anger block, and all of a sudden that line goes over where there's very little love. I think it, if you think about this, the line wouldn't be down the middle. It would go over in a very small place for love in your heart. That's going backwards. When you're really f full of anger, you're full of fear, you're full of worry, guilt. Which way would that line go? Would it go towards the blocks, meaning you have more love, less blocks? Or is fear, anger, worry, guilt, does that tend to close the heart? Are those blocks to love? Yes. And would the line go from the middle and kind of squeeze out love where you almost don't feel or recognize love in your heart? You don't feel it. You don't recognize it. Somebody trying to help you when you're angry or fearful. And you just, there's no room for love. You can't receive it from a person or from God or from his prophet or from the Holy Spirit because the blocks, the fear, anger, worry, and guilt have pushed that line and almost pushed love completely out of this video, out of this little uh, image we're putting up. I hope that's clear. I think most people know that anger, fear, guilt, and worry are generally not a positive thing. They reduce the quality of life. They reduce joy. They certainly close the heart. It's certainly not, you don't want to make a lot of decisions in life when you're full of anger, fear, or worry. It's not a good time to make important decisions. But what I want to talk about and what I'm trying to show you is I'm focus, focusing on why are those passions, what I call negative passions, blocks to spiritual growth? Let's just focus on that. Or you could say blocks to more abundant, better life. Because they close the heart. And when you close the heart, and that's why I like love on the one side, you have less room for love both giving and receiving. So I hope this little little uh, illustration shows when you put something on one side as a block or is it a positive? If you have more peace would that on the blocks, would that go on the block side or on the love side? That would go on the love side. Peace, balance, gratitude. That would move the line on the on, right down the middle and it would push out some of the blocks. If you're at peace, it would push out your anger, maybe your fear and your worry, maybe even the guilt. I, I hope, hope I'm explaining this because this is really important. And if you've been striving for a more abundant life or striving for a relationship with the Heavenly Father to grow spiritually on whatever path, whatever path you're on, and you just keep hitting a wall or you find it's just getting harder and harder and you're trying harder and harder, Maybe the thing to do is slow down, don't try harder, but go help read my Spiritual Keys book and learn how to reduce the blocks. You might get a lot more results out of reducing anger, or fear, or worry than reading more scripture. You might be hitting a wall where until you, you get rid of the fear, worry, anger, and guilt, it becomes the law of diminishing returns by reading scripture or going to church or whatever. And that's why I'm trying, this might be a smarter way to get to accomplish your goals. So fear, worry, guilt, anger. Now guilt is a double-edged sword, and this might surprise some of you. If you hold guilt very long or somebody is teaching and trying to guilt you into something, that's not good. But guilt has a kind of a silver lining, and this so I hope I explain it because I don't want you to live in guilt. It's not a good way to live. But if you're guilty over something, it's kind of like you're, you're conscious. You have a a consciousness where you go, well, I, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have stole that. I shouldn't have done that. I hurt somebody's feelings. 
if you have guilt, in a way, it's a good thing. Initially, it gets your attention. You did something you don't feel good about. That means you probably have a good heart. It's positive for a very, very short period of time. If it gets your attention, this guilt, and it wakes you up to something you could have done better, you could have done different, if you learn from it and don't make the same mistake, if that's what you feel it is, a mistake, if you don't make the same mistake, and this is important, you take responsibility for what you did that caused the guilt in the first place, that's a good thing. And as soon as you take responsibility and learn the lesson, get rid of the guilt. So guilt is the one, fear, worry, and anger, generally not very helpful. But guilt has a slight silver lining in a very, very small dose. Now, the other passions of the mind are going to take some explanation because I don't think they're generally understood. I think fear, worry, anger, and guilt, most of you probably have a good feel for that. My book talks a lot about those things a lot more than this video, but I want to talk about them today. The things like excessive attachment, lust, and vanity, how does that block spiritual growth? And so I get this the best I can, and I spend a lot of time in this book, and Frank, the Heavenly Father, helped me every day write this book, this 500-page book. I'm going to do something I normally don't do, and I hope you're okay with it. I'm going to read one, one paragraph that I hope will explain excessive attachment and vanity, why that does not help you spiritually. Okay. Excessive attachment to anything tends to blind us to our options. And I'm, I'm attached to my wife, to my students, to uh, trying to keep my health good, to where I live, to my grandkids. But what's excessive attachment? If you're excessively attached, for example, to chocolate, and your grandma pulls out a chocolate bar and you knock her down to the floor to take her chocolate, does that seem a little excessive? Of course. If you enjoy a tantal chocolate bar, fine. If all you think about all day is a can of beer, maybe you know you drink beer, that's fine. That's, that's a personal choice. But if all you think about all day is a can of beer, is that excessive? Um, taking drugs is, 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 is a form of lust, which we'll talk about. But excessive attachment. Being excessively attached means we are entangled or tied up in something that makes us less free. If you're thinking about chocolate all day or a can of beer or being liked, whatever, if that's all you think about or a certain outcome is the only outcome, you're blind to any other possibilities. You're blind to getting your creative juices flowing because you're so excessively attached to a certain outcome. Um, you're less free, you're less free. So uh, being excessively attached means we're entangled or, quote, tied up in something that makes us less free, less free to use our creativity as soul to find solutions to a challenge we may face, see our options in a situation or recognize opportunities or choices that may benefit us. It takes some experience and discernment to determine when our attachments have become excessive. Both vanity and excessive attachment make us less receptive. With vanity, we feel we already know what we need or are so, quote, full of ourselves, unquote. There's little or no room for new perspective or suggestions. You know, we're blind. We're closed down. Therefore, we're less willing to truly listen and be receptive. With excessive attachment, we are less receptive because many times we are attached to a certain outcome or way we think things, quote, should be, unquote, and we are unwilling to accept other possibilities or trust what God wants for us or others in a particular situation. When I teach excessive attachment in our classes, it, it takes a while for me to help people understand what it is. I think we're all attached in certain ways, but when is it excessive? And that might, might be for another day, but I hope I hope if you're really excessively attached to something and you have no room for other options, you won't even consider something else. You're really not very free. Um, so if you read the book, I've got a great deal of information on that. But I hope it at least puts this information out initially. Now, another, another one of the, I think, misunderstood 
passions of the mind, negative passions, would be lust. And people assume that sex. If all you think about all day is sex, that might be lust. But lust is much wider and much more almost insidious and much more dangerous than you might think. Back to the grandma story. If you'll do, push your grandma to the floor to take her chocolate bar, are you lusting for chocolate? That's also a form of excessive attachment. Some of these passions overlap a little bit. So excessive attachments, which I covered first, and lust sometimes, it's hard to distinguish. If you think about beer, as I mentioned excessively, are you also lusting for beer? Um, anything that controls you, like drugs, for example, which is a problem in this country, if somebody's on drugs and that's what they think about 24 hours a day, would do anything for drugs, lie, cheat, and steal, you're less free. Is that obvious? You're not free to be you. All you do is think about chocolate, sex, uh, drugs, beer, whatever it may be. Being well-liked, being famous, getting richer, whatever it is, it's as excessive. It's like excessive attachment. Lust is, is very close related to to that. And as soul, you're a child of God. And we spend almost every story, there's 135 stories, almost every story explains more about your eternal life as soul. And we have two, two parts of that, one we just put on last week. As soul, you're made of the Holy Spirit. And I use this example in, in one of them. If God's Holy Spirit's coming down a beam of light and sound, and I took a melon ball scoop. Say God took a melon ball scoop, you know, for watermelon and those types of things. And if God took a scoop of his Holy Spirit out of light and sound in a nice ball, which we showed you last week in a video, uh, that's the real you. That's soul. That's your eternal self that goes on after your body goes away. God will give you a new body. If you reincarnate, you get a new body. That's the eternal you, an individualized piece individualized piece of the Holy Spirit. You have your thoughts, your opinions, your wisdom, your connection with God and prophet. If you love somebody, when you leave your body, either temporarily or, or permanent, you still love those souls. Uh, that's the eternal you. If that's the eternal you, that is a child of God. And by definition, if you're a child of God, you're divine. And when I hear people in churches saying, only certain people are divine. It makes me sad. You are all divine children of God. So if you're made of God's Holy Spirit, a small piece of it, very individualized through many lifetimes, and you get your own style and personality, and that's a good thing. God loves uniqueness. Wouldn't it be sad to be controlled by chocolate? Here's this holy thing that lives for eternity you're a child of God. That means, by definition, you're divine. What does it say to let chocolate control a divine being? A can of beer control you, make you less free? Excessive greed, where it's great to make an income and have a good standard of living, and you're rewarded by creative business or products that people want. But if that's all you think about, then this divine being which you are, which God loves, you've made it made of as God. If you're made from the Holy Spirit, which is what you are, you're also made from God's love, the Holy Spirit of God's love. How sad to be controlled by a passion of the mind, or a can of beer, or a chocolate bar, and definitely from drugs, and destroy your life. You're a divine spark of God and destroying your life. So these things, this lust and excessive attachment that fits nicely together, it's definitely a block to an abundant life with drugs, even a life at all sometimes, and definitely a better relationship with the Heavenly Father. So blocks to spiritual growth are also blocks to love. On that graphic we put up, instead of putting blocks to spiritual growth and spiritual growth, Spiritual growth is the ability to accept more love from God, people, and to give more love. That's the foundational part of spiritual growth, to be more receptive to spiritual growth. So that's why I put up God on one side and blocks, or love on one side and blocks to love on the other side. So fear, worry, anger, guilt, lust, excessive attachments, vanity are all blocks to abundance, of course, 
But right now, as prophet, I'm more interested right now in helping you focus on your spiritual growth, whatever path you're on. And next week, I hope to take this a little farther in some areas that you probably haven't thought about. It's covered real well, several blocks of spiritual growth besides the negative passions of the mind. And I hope today gives you something to think about. Your energy might be better utilized and you might be more successful in your growth, your spiritual growth, instead of pushing and hitting the wall. Go back, maybe read the Keys book, learn how to reduce some of these passions of the mind. That might give you a fresh start and uh, a better use of your time and effort. So I hope today's video gives you something to uh, think about and a way out of, uh, if you're hitting the wall out there with abundance or spiritual growth, I hope you get the book, Spiritual Keys to More Abundant Life. A lot of the reduction of these passions, the keys will help you with that. And I'm not saying you'll get rid of all the fear, worry, anger. It's, it's impossible if you have a physical body, which I call an earth suit for soul, the real you. But what if you reduce your anger, instead of being angry every day and being an angry person, what if once a week you get a little angry? Would that be an improvement? Of course. And it's worth reducing the anger or fear, worry, or whatever it is. Let's say you have fear about something all day long or worry all day long. What if you you still have fear, but it's only for a few moments and then you get over it? Would that be an improvement? Of course. So I'm not promising you get rid of these. I think when soul, the real us, is living in an earth suit, a physical body, I like to call earth suits while we're down here, I don't believe we can push that line in the illustration all the way over but imagine if you can reduce some of these passions of the mind and push that line way over to the side where they just have a little bit over there, maybe a beachhead, and once in a while they pop up when you're having a rough day and you have all that room for God's love and people love that you didn't have before. That would really reduce the blocks to abundance and to spiritual growth. I really hope this made sense today. I'm trying to help you with this. It's really a simple concept but I hope I've explained it well enough that it, it makes sense and it, and the motivation to maybe, maybe try to reduce some of those passions. If you're up at the retreat center, we, we work on those a lot, but if you're not up here, uh, maybe I can help you on the Zoom meeting if you have a question about that or guide you to a certain key that will help. This book will help you if you want to take action on this. Thank you for watching today and I hope next week we'll have a, a part two to this. Thank you so much.